Today's demo is the simplest of all possible communication between iOS and Flutter. I'm going to show sending messages back and forth between an iOS application and the wrapped Flutter application. And in this case, it's super simple. And we're going to do it in this simulator. And I apologize if there's any flickering. The screen capture with the simulator being moved. I'm going to try something a little different here. So we're basically going to start an iOS application. I could do this in Visual Studio Code, but instead I'm going to do it in Android Studio here. And the reason is because the logs are prettier. All right, so that should start it and it's building and it deploys. And there we have a very simple application. And this is a lot like the Android and web demo when the Flutter, so we have a iOS application on the phone simulator that basically launches a Flutter app. And when the Flutter app comes up, it sends a JSON message from the Flutter application to the iOS application. And you can see that message in the log window in Xcode here. And I'm only running Xcode so that I get this log and I could run it from either place. And I don't know anything about Xcode because I'm not a mobile developer and you probably figured that out by now. Anyway, so whenever we click on this button right here, um, what happens is we, that causes an increment function to be called. That increment function gets increments the counter, and then a message is published to the message channel that says it's been incremented with the new count. So every time we click a button in here, it inside the Flutter app increments the counter and posts the message to a message channel. And the iOS app is listening to the message channel and it prints it. And the other thing we can do is I didn't want to change this. This is the dumbest of all possible applications. Whenever you shake the phone, it will increment the counter. I guess that could actually be useful. But anyway, so it turns out if we do device shake, that will actually call a function in the iOS app, which will then post a message to the message channel, which uh, will cause it to increment. And then when it's incremented, we'll get another incremented message. So there we did a shake. We can see that the Flutter application received an action increment message. So you see the Flutter logs here. And then we can see that the counter actually went up from three to four. And when it did, we posted a message back, which was uh, the iOS app received from Flutter. Flutter posted the message and it said that it was incremented. So every time we shake this device, we get an incremented counter like we're counting it by shaking it. That's actually kind of cool. Anyway, so that's how this thing works. And let me show you the code real quick. And this is way shorter than some of the other demos. So it turns out we need to do two things, right? When, we, when the counter button is pressed, we want to be able to receive a message and uninitialized. And that's actually here. I only wanted to do all this in a single file, no changes. Other than that, you wouldn't really do this this way. You'd be all structured and do it code correctly and all that kind of crap. But um, we're not doing that here. So all I did was inside, I wrote overrode. This is the normal um, override down here, right? Where we do the launch options thing, right? Um, so all I did was we go and get the controller and it's because we can set message handlers on controller, um, whatever they're called. And so we need access to a controller to, to hang this thing. So in this case, we're gonna create a Flutter message channel. And I want you to notice we do a JSON codec here and you saw that in the log file, right? So we see JSON messages here. That's because we're using the JSON codec on both sides, just like we did in the Android app and the web app. And then what we do is we create a message handler that whenever it receives a message on this channel, uh, you can see here, whenever we see on this Flutter channel, we set the message handler. All we do is we get the message as a string and then we log it. And I'm going to do some other stuff in here, uh, convert it to JSON objects and stuff, but I haven't done that yet. I got all excited that this actually works. Okay, so this is receiving a message from Flutter. What about when we shake? Well, it turns out we need to put that on a window um, or some other control item. So I just wrote an extension for UI window and stuffed it in here. And I picked this up off of Stack Overflow and hacked it up a little bit. So all we do is we um, set the root controller because this is actually what you got to do on the window anyway. Um, anyway, so we overrode this motion ended, right? And so uh, there's when we do a shake, that's a motion, just like rotate and other things. But so if it was a shake that we just finished, we logged that we device shaken, and then we get the root controller. Uh, root view controller just like we did before so that we can create a channel and then we send a message which is a JSON string and we're using the JSON codec and we use the JSON codec on the Flutter side. I'm not going to go into that. It's in the repo. 
Um, it's actually in this repo, right? Uh, well, you know what, like right here, this repo, go there. Um, and that will do that. And so that's all the code there is to this thing. Is there anything else I wanted to show? Oh, I guess just show you generally how it works. We have a control that does an increment on the flutter side that actually calls the message channel with the JSON string action incremented that goes across the message channel over to the iOS side where there's a message channel and a listener picks it up and logs it. If we do the shake control, right, we do the shake, uh, that actually calls, um, this is actually a little bit of a lie here. It actually, uh, well, in this case we did it, it anyway. So it basically calls, passes a message to the message channel. This actually should be send, I will fix that. Um, and this basically does an action increment that comes in on the message message channel here. The listener actually calls the increment function and then it uh, ends up rippling back down to the host side. So that's really all there is to this. It is super straightforward. Um, and I probably just made the video look bad by making that thing come back. But that's what I'm doing it and I'm out of here. Have a great day. I will walk through message channels in more detail in another video.